All right, today we have a topic which we're titling Zonal Acharya, uh, Who is Not to Blame. So what happened was, um, well, I woke up this morning, early this morning as usual, and uh, usually I don't check my mail till a little bit later in the day, but I, something was kind of poking me, said, go ahead and check your mail. So I received a, an email from a god brother who uh, prefers to, you know, uh, remain anonymous uh, for reasons that he doesn't want to take a lot of flack from from uh, from some anybody. All right. Mm. So um, basically, he, he sent me this long email, and uh, the the issue was at the very bottom of the email. And what this was, this is something that was is going being circulated around today, yesterday, mm -hmm. day before. It's very, very current. But the the email was written a couple of years ago. Now I don't mean fifteen years ago. I mean like two or three years ago. The uh, the uh, mm -hmm. uh, email that's being circulated around uh, was written by a very well previously a very senior. Uh, Iskan uh, leader, uh, sannyasi, mm -hmm. a guru, a GBC. He was all all of the three. Uh, we call that the all you can be, <laughs> all you can be, aspire for. <coughs> Outside of self realization, you can aspire for these things. So um, I, I have a few things here on this paper, mm -hmm. so it's easy for me to read them. And uh, he asked me if I can clear up this issue. Now, this is the issue of the zonal acharya, it's, or the zonal acharya system. Mm -hmm. So for maybe a, the second generation devotees or third generation devotees who don't know about this, I'll have to give some background, all right? Mm -hmm. So everybody is aware of the disappearance of Srila Prabhupada on November 14th, 1977. And after that, at the next Mayapur meeting, and immediately following that, a system of initiating gurus was set into place, which is known as the Zonal Acharya system. And basically, to summarize, the world map was divided into sectors. Well, it was already into sectors where there, there were zones and mm. GBC managers, which were to over, overlook the development and all these things. Uh, uh, of, of the centers around the world of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So these uh, zones were then, each, each zone was given an initiating guru. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole other topic, but there were 11 personalities uh, from within the Hare Krishna movement. And uh, they were then designated with the service and the authority to provide uh, Hari Nam and sec uh, first and second initiation for devotees in these various zones. So each one of these 11 gurus was uh, uh, designated a zone or zones, mm. you see, because there were more than 11 zones for the, for the whole world. And uh, so that, that, that's a whole other topic about this. And so the processes for uh, new devotees receiving Harinam initiation and for some devotees who had already received Harinam initiation but had not received second initiation from Srila Prabhupada before he departed. So uh, they were authorized uh, to give their god brother second initiation or uh, uh, and later on sannyas initiation, etc. So these were known as the 11 initiating gurus in ISKCON, and the system was called the Zonal Acharya system. So as time went on, and, and this, is, this system started off uh, with a very high kind of expectation. Mm. The, the qualities of these uh, 11 new Acharyas were, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, they, were, they were ranking right up there as the highest of self-realized devotees, um, 
the only pure devotees in the Hare Krishna movement and it, it, whatever glories you could shower upon them uh, were they showered, did. <laughs> yeah, were showered upon them. And uh, as we referred to uh, Srila Prabhupada as Prabhupada, so each one of these uh, initiating gurus, pretty much each one of them took uh, took a also a title similar to a Prabhupada, uh, the Pods. Mm-hmm. Was a, uh, well, it's not one was Acharya Dev, there was Acharya Pod, Vishnu Pod. There were, everybody had a name like this. So it was very, you know, it's like the, the mood was nothing has changed. In fact, it's expanded with one mm-hmm. pure devotee led the movement now. Eleven. Eleven right? pure devotees mm-hmm. led the movement. Well, what happened simultaneously with the introduction of this Acharya Zonalacharya system was troubles began to manifest. Now we're not going to get into that because that's not what we're, what we're here to talk about. What mm-hmm. what troubles in each zone and everything, but it 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 sort of the troubles sort of I guess you could say started to culminate uh, in in the early early eighties, nineteen eighty, nineteen eighty one, like mm-hmm. this, nineteen eighty two, uh, and and and. Very serious problems, and by very serious problems, I mean uh, I'm referring to uh, members of the eleven initiating gurus uh, fell down, and by fall down, I mean illicit sex, drugs, and uh, kind of like very, very fallen. And this, this, this put a crack in the whole the whole system because just two years ago, these were infallible personalities; they were the highest level of pure devotees; they were right up there on their Vyasasans, right next to Srila Prabhupada. And so this, you know, there was already from the very beginning some doubt about what is actually going on here. Mm. Um, I can remember being told personally by other senior devotees that if I myself was not under the graces of one of my god brothers, one of the 11 gurus, that I myself had no connection to Srila Prabhupada. That my only connection to Srila Prabhupada was through my service to these chosen eleven. Now, being you know, being kind of a hard shelled crab as I am, I didn't I didn't let this penetrate very deep. But I can tell you it penetrated so deep to some devotees they got so disturbed that one of our God brothers committed suicide mm. uh, in the United States, and he left a suicide note and expressed what his problem was and I thought well that's rather that's sort of you know that's a little bit soft shell crab Uh, every devotee should have a little bit of a hard shell around their faith and their devotion because Maya can attack from any direction so you should be a little bit resistant but somehow this devotee was overwhelmed by the situation that he had no longer any connection because he was having a trouble, he was having some personal trouble with the zonal uh, acharya, mm. and there, thus the, the 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 understanding was you have no connection to Prabhupada anymore, and he ended up committing suicide, a very tragic event. I won't mention his name, but it's fact. All right, so the the so this began. It it started so there had been some well, just some feeling that something's not right. Well, with the fall down of two or three of these 11 Acharyas, and as the years went by, we saw more and more and more of them. I think only two of the original 11 are still in really good standing, but that's the point here. The point was uh, some soul searching started, or let's call it institutional searching started, like what is wrong? What is wrong? And it was, and, and as we went into the uh, 1980, I would say, I think it started in 1983, somewhere around there, there started being these meetings. And uh, eventually these meetings got a name, and they were the meetings of various devotees. And these meetings were outside the approval of the GBC, etc., the Governing Body Commission. And uh, those meetings kind of took on a uh, a, a, a name as the uh, I think they were called the Temple President Temple Presidents Reform Meetings, 
Mm. And uh, there was a, a couple of very famous ones. One I remember was in Tawako, Tawako, New Jersey, Temple Reform meetings, Temple President Reform. But the main thing was reform. And mm. at those meetings, people really started to express their frustrations, what they had seen, why they thought things were going wrong. And there was a lot of institutional self-assessment by this group. Now, this is a very big group. Uh, there were usually not less than five or six or more sannyasis there. Most of those meetings took place in North America and pretty much every temple president of North America was in those meetings. And in those days, every temple president in North America, with exception of maybe one or something, but I think all of them, they were all direct Prabhupada disciples. They were not second generation. Whereas today, you may go to a temple somewhere in the world and the temple president is a, what what they refer to as a second generation devotee. So this this assessment, uh, you know, self assessment, institutional self assessment, was going on in different ways. There were papers written. There were various meetings, uh, both large and small, and it came to this crescendo. Not to say it's absolutely correct, but their opinion was it came to this crescendo sometime. Uh, d during the later uh, uh, 1980s, and here the, the I didn't record all the dates for all all of this, but uh, there around 1990 and 91, it really reached they they reached the peak of their of their conclusion, mm. and they traced the defects and the disturbances in the and the majority of the issues that developed in, in ISKCON after the disappearance of Srila Prabhupada to the establishment of the zonal acharya system. Mm. And by that time, uh, I was no longer in, in ISKCON officially. And uh, so um, I wasn't part of those final meetings that, that came to this conclusion. But their evidence is apparently were pretty much irrefutable that this has caused so much uh, so many problems so much dissension mm -hmm. and and all these types of things so during this time uh gurus had fallen gurus had been added and things had been expanded and so forth like that but the point is they came to this understanding that the zonal acharya system was the root of all the problems that developed afterwards you understand? It's the yeah. root root cause. Mm. So I won't mention who, but the question arose before the GBC, being pushed by temple presidents and other senior devotees. Now where did this idea come from? Zonal Acharyas. Whose idea was this? Who started the Zonal Acharya system? And I won't mention the devotee's name, but he's a senior member of the GBC since from as far back as I can remember. He stood up in the meeting, he pointed out the window, and he laid the blame squarely on Srila Sridhar Maharaj and said, the problem is we went to Sridhar Maharaj and he recommended the Zonal Acharya system. And there you have it. We're sorry. We shouldn't have listened to him. He's the one to blame. And so then the blame was, you know, put squarely on Srila Sridhar Maharaj. Well, then I remember it was around 1990, 91. I was sitting in my room in Vrindavan. And Paramadwiti Maharaj, uh, my god brother, he burst into the room and he's got this paper in his hand. And he's shaking this paper. And he's just... What's the word? Livid? Livid, yeah. Livid. He's totally livid. He's saying, and he's got his uh, English-German accent, that blaming, that blaming the Zolacharya system on Sridhar Mars. And he's up and down and ranting and raving in my room. He's got this paper. And this was a paper that was presented by a member of the GBC. Again, I won't say his name, but he had written this rather, you know, unique, I guess you'd have to say, presentation where he just 
branded the the blame of the Zonalacharya system. So this is this is the day. These are the days before the the PAMHO, the COM, the internet, the websites, and all this. Mm-hmm. And so we began from there on in our confrontational preachings, which would take place, or we'd be speaking with some devotees, and they would say, well, Sri Ramars, is he's the one to blame, and we go, I'm sorry, he's not the one to blame, and we can prove it. Mm-hmm. And how can we prove it? Because we have the original tapes, uh, uh, tape recordings of the GBC body going to Sridhar Maharaj in 1978, and uh, requesting advice from him about uh, initiations within ISKCON. We have those tapes. Furthermore, we have the tapes uh, from 1978 of Pradumna going to visit uh, Sridhar Maharaj and asking many uh, quintessential questions about mm. the about initiations, gurus, etc. in ISKCON. We have Pradumna's letter. We have uh, Prabhupada's instructions. We have all these things. There are proofs that that what is being said, blaming Sridhar Maharaj for the Zonalacharya system, this is false. So that was back in the, what did I say that was? That was back in the early 90s. So yeah. gradually, so we were preaching this right up through the 90s, doing our thing. But whenever we came across this, we would say, I'm sorry, but we have the evidence and and we could quote this, we could quote this. Well, some of these things started feeding back into the people who were saying that Sridhar Maharaj is the blame. And, you know, I have always had a couple of of contacts, you would say, or even friends uh, within the GBC who I've met with over the over the last 20 and 30 years to discuss things from time to time. And I've met many, many sannyasis. And every time we would meet with them during the 90s, uh, not every time, but this issue would come up and we would say, no, sorry, Sridhar Mars is not the blame. You can figure out who is the blame, but we can tell you who's not the blame. And so this point, our, our counter, let's say our counter- what do you call it? Counter, not propaganda, but our, our we countered their statement. Mm-hmm. This reached a crescendo in 2001. And this became an issue uh, because devotees wanted to have this cleared up. Like, who's the blame? And is Sridhar Maharaj the blame or is he not the blame? And finally, from different, uh, I guess, pressures or queries or interest and even sincerity to understand, well, let's get this sorted out. Uh, Nishringa Maharaj and, and his group are saying Sridhar Maharaj is not the blame, and they have they say they have the proof. So what happened was, I believe it's called the Executive Committee, mm. they assigned a group of devotees, of three devotees, to come and speak with me and to review all the evidence that I said I had. Mm. So in 2001, this group came. And then in 2002 at the Mayapur meetings, I think they came, it was in the fall or late summer. And uh, they came to our ashram in Vermont. They spent three days, three devotees spent three days with me from just after breakfast all the way till evening time, <clears throat> discussing, reviewing, looking, reading transcribes, listening to uh, recordings from the 1970s, and uh, and so forth. And um, then they left with copies of everything for their own deliberation together, apart from myself. Mm-hmm. And then with no further uh, contact or consultation with me, they presented their findings to the GBC in 2002, which, revol- which evolved into a resolution number 403 called Sri Pad Sridhar Maharaj and the Zonal Acharya System. All right, so that's kind of a little bit of history all the way up to 2002. But this morning I woke up with this highlighted a statement. 
I don't want to read this. This is by a previous ISKCON sannyasi GBC guru. One of the original gurus? One of the original gurus, but who had fallen many years ago, 20 or 25 years ago, had fallen into, into illicit activities, etc. But this statement apparently is being circulated today, yesterday, and tomorrow. It's very, very current, but it's from an email or a letter that he wrote himself a couple of years ago. So this person who wrote this wrote it a couple of years ago, but it's being passed around today as his his uh, his evidence or his statement about who's to blame for the Zonalacharya system, mm. because it's still for the second generation devotees and and probably most devotees in the whole world it's no longer an issue, and many of them never even heard of the Zonalacharya system, right. <coughs> But it's still out there, and uh, the, uh, the the people who were involved in this conversation, there was a list of them, and they were all they were all Prabhupada disciples. They were all senior devotees, some householders, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, some just uh, brahmacharis, sannyasis. There were quite a few people. So I'm going to read now, or yes, I'm going to read this statement. <laughs> this is a statement uh, that that has brought about the, the this broadcast this morning. Okay, so the statement is by this very senior, ex-senior leading disciple of Prabhupada, high member of the GBC, initiating guru and sannyasi. So, quote, <coughs> so, he says, so, the root of the entire problem with dealing with Prabhupada's untimely demise was this idiotic idea to go to a person who was famous within Gaudiya Mutt for being a breaker of form and the destroyer of Mutts. Mutts means temples, ashrams. And in one short meeting, he set the scene for the, what is this word? Ruination mm. of peace in Iskon by dividing the house against itself placing young men in an elitist position far beyond the control of any other organization and destroying the organization's capacity to correct the situation later on. He set everyone into camps, and as we all know, the camps tend to fight for supremacy. Well, the rest is more or less history. End of quote. So, in the uh, in this longer email, Srila Sridhar Maharaj is mentioned, and this uh, person, which he's laying the blame on, is Sridhar Maharaj. And the first thing I like to point out is that, yes, historically, in 1978, the GBC body, I think all except one or two members, went over to the ashram of Srila Sridhar Maharaj. And he says... First off, he says, he, call, he calls this an idiotic idea to go to a person who was a form breaker and the destroyer of mutts. So the devotee should know that this idiotic idea to go to Srila Sridhar Maharaj for uh, advice was directly Prabhupada's idea. So... <laughs> this idiot now let me say that again this idiotic he says this idiotic idea well this idiotic idea I mean this stupid idea this is a direct instruction of Srila Prabhupada which followed a question by Tamal Krishna Maharaj in the, uh, about two, two to three weeks before Srila Prabhupada departed from this world Tamal Krishna Maharaj there were others in the room a mm -hmm. Tripurari Maharaj was in the room actually Tripurari Maharaj was giving a was massaging Srila Prabhupada's feet when Tamal asked the Tamal Krishnamaras asked this question. Bhakti Churu Swami was in the in the in the room uh in Hamsa Dutta as well I believe. Hamsa Dutta mm -hmm. um and in, in, in all likelihood Hari Sari, maybe not, but what I'm saying is this is not like nobody heard this. 
Nobody was around. No, the room had a number of senior disciples of Srila Prabhupada in the room in 1977. And Tamal Krishnamaya said to Prabhupada, he asked a question. He said, Prabhupada, in your absence, is there anyone we can go to for clarification if issues arrive, ar- arise? Mm. And Prabhupada responded, yes, you may go to my god brother, B.R. Sridhar Maharaj in Nabadweep. So I, I'm so tempted to say who has said this, but I'm not going to, because then I'll be I'll be charged with personal attack. So I'm not going to say who said this, but the person who said this is a is a premier idiot himself, and he's saying, you know, who whose idiot idiotic idea was this to go to Sridhar Maharaj, and he tries to to blame the whole. Uh, demise and 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 breakup of the Gaudiya Mutt uh, on Sri Maharaj, which is a, a very uh, distorted uh, um, understanding of mm-hmm. the history of Gaudiya Mutt. All right, so um, so yeah, so then you have that. All right, so so this came to its crescendo in two thousand one in the late summer, early fall. The GBC sent these three men to interview with me uh, and, and go over all the information, et cetera, et cetera. And then they went to Mayapur and they presented their findings without further influence from me. So, Gary, Maharaj, I'll let you read from there. I want you to read the resolutions, read the mm-hmm. whole detailed thing that, that that we extracted. Now, what Gary Maharaj is going to read now is copy and paste directly from the resolution GBC resolution manual that you can still find online. Is it still online today? It's still online. Yeah, the resolutions are online. All the, all the resolutions, or you can go to Mayapur and find your hard copy, big old thick. They keep their copies of year by year resolutions, and there are two resolutions we're going to read here. Uh, one is a little longer, and one is just very very short. The one is mm-hmm. from 1987, but the first right. one, the most important one, is from 2002. After all the evidence is revealed uh, to them and reviewed by them that Sridhar Maharaj is not to blame for the Zonglacharya system. Mm-hmm. Okay, so please carry on and read everything there. So this is resolution number 403 from 2002, entitled Sripad Sridhar Maharaj and the Zonal Acharya System. Whereas a committee composed of Bir Krishnadas Goswami, Guru Prasad Swami and Keshava Bharati Das met and discussed with Bhakti Gaurav and Narasimha Swami the issue of Sripad B.R. Sridhar Maharaj's relationship to the establishment of the zonal Acharya system in ISKCON. Whereas the GBC body recognizes that there may be a mistaken perception in some circles that the GBC holds Sripad B.R. Sridhar Maharaj responsible for ISKCON's acceptance of the Zonal Acharya system. uh, Statement resolved that the impression that may exist in some circles that the GBC body regards Sripad B.R. Sridhar Maharaj as responsible for ISKCON's accepting the Zonal Acharya system is erroneous. Erroneous. Please get your dictionary, people. Look up the word erroneous. The GBC body realizes that regardless of how the zonal acharya system evolved, it alone is responsible for its acceptance and implementation. Any imputation that Sripad B.R. Sridhar Maharaj is responsible is wrong. In this regard, the GBC body would like to restate as per Resolution 76 at the 1987 annual general meeting that, quote, ISKCON devotees should strictly avoid hearing or speaking personal criticism of Sripad B.R. Sridhar Maharaj. All right, so some of it's, uh, it's, uh, even my mind just went, well, if it's, it's, it's made so clear here, mm. let's just summarize. Sridhar Maharaj, Srila B.R., Bhakti Raksak Sridhar Maharaj, is not being held responsible. Uh, however it developed, they're not saying, but he is not responsible. And anyone who thinks that he is responsible, it is wrong. 
So mm-hmm. it's, it's quite clear from here. And also, they refer a previous resolution that says no one should speak anything bad about Sridhar Maharaj or any of Prabhupada's uh, 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 God brothers. All right. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very, very clear. It's right there in the resolutions of 2002. So someone might ask, well, how is it then that 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 people still want to put the blame on Srila Sridhar Maharaj? OK, now let me answer that question for you. The answer is because nobody reads the GBC resolutions. <laughs> The GBC themselves don't even read their resolutions. They bust out of those meetings. They can't, actually, I've been told they can't even stand to sit there for two weeks and talk to each other. They're so glad to get away that most of them don't even stick around for the festival anymore. The Gorpornima yeah. Festival, the GBCs used to meet while the festival was going on in progress in the presence of Srila Prabhupada, etc., etc. In the current situation, for years and years now, the GBC comes two weeks before they have their meetings and they take off. Most of them don't even stay for the Gorpornima Festival. Mm -hmm. So nobody reads these resolutions. So what we have is a situation like modern day, what do we call it? Fake news. All right. Mm -hmm. Some, Some story blaming somebody for something or accusing somebody for something like the Me Too movement, you know. You know, like uh, sometime back that Judge Kavanaugh was somebody was being appointed to the Supreme Court and there was accusations coming in, you know, about sexual abuse and this and all this stuff was just pouring in. And the fake news media, they were covering it every night in primetime television, cable TV, every Internet, you know, CNN and everything. They were just hammering, hammering, hammering. And then it turned out that, hey, guess what? All this is fake. All this is false. These are false statements. This is fraud. You know, Mm -hmm. this is perjury. It's all nonsense. And then there's zero coverage. Zero coverage to inform the people, hey, you know, for the last two weeks, we've been we've been hammering this case against this person and all this evidence. And hey, guess what? It ends up it's all false. It's called Machiavellian. It's Machiavellian Mm -hmm. politics. You, you just pump the lies out there like crazy. And when it's revealed that it's a lie, you just be don't quiet. Tell anyone. You don't yeah. tell anybody. And your propaganda just continues. So, you know, for a decade, they hammered in lectures and, and bump. I saw some of these uh, papers back in the day, bombastic 30-page papers, laying the blame on the Godium, laying the blame on Prophet's God brothers and and the pinnacle of the blame, laying it on Sridhar Maharaj. And then they write this piddly half a page resolution that exonerates Srila Sridhar Maharaj that he is not the blame. And they write it in their little book and close the book until next year. Nobody reads it. Mm-hmm. But what should be done in any sane situation is those sane people who propagated that nonsense, they should be out there on, on, on the tour, in the temples, in the Bhagavatam class, printed on every... Uh, a bulletin board and making the devotees understand this was our mistake. Now, in this, they the, the GBC basically takes the, the the brunt of the blame and says we're to blame, and they don't mm-hmm. go further. And the reason they don't want to go further is like, well, which GBC is because there had already been so much fighting and quarreling and everything like this, and disappointment, and they didn't want to go back in their history and say, okay, it's such and such Maharaj, or it's such and such Prabhu, and and lay the finger of blame somewhere else. Of course, they were happy to do that on Srila Sridhar Maharaj until we finally got their attention and made them come to, come to the table and examine the history and the evidence, and it completely exonerated Srila Sridhar Maharaj. Mm -hmm. But because they don't make the same endeavor to vindicate as they did to blame, there are still thousands, literally thousands of devotees. They will say, well, you know, it was Sridhar Maharaj. He's the blame, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the ironic, what did he say that was? Idiotic. Idiotic idea to go to Sridhar Maharaj. Shameful, absolutely shameful. So this person who's propagating this 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 statement I read in the beginning, you know, 
is probably one of the most fallen devotees. He's in the top five most fallen devotees, I think, in the whole Hare, history of the Hare Krishna movement. Yet, people will accept his recollection, his summary. Mm. So, the, the, root ca- the root of the entire problem, he says, is Sri Dharmara. Yeah, blame everything on somebody else and take no blame yourself. I, I'm holding myself back not to mention this person's name. He's in the top five, maybe the top three, who did more to disturb the tranquility and the harmony in the Krishna consciousness movement than any of the rest of all of us put together. But yet, he still has some voice for those. It should be pointed out as well that, okay, this person's gone. He's, he's left us gone. He's still, he's still, he's still saying this so he doesn't take any flack. He's making all this, all these lies up. But there are gurus in Erskan, in good, supposedly in good standing from their p- perspective, that even today blame Srila Sridhar and go totally against this resolution that the GBC has made. That's right. This happened last year. I know it was this year in September, a leading... Last, last year, September, yeah. Last year, September, in 2018, mm-hmm. a leading ISKCON guru sat on the Vyasasan. The YouTube was there. The recordings, we were sent it. And he blamed Sridhar Maharaj for the problems in ISKCON. Yeah. These people alone are to blame. We are alone to blame, not somebody else. Not And then they said, well, yeah, we're to blame because we listen to this outside influence. Well, along with this Krishna talk, I don't know, should we read those statements or we're just going to put them in an article? We're going to be posting an article. We can post an article. Yeah. We have, uh, we have we've transcribed some of the direct statements of Sridhar Maharaj given in 1978 mm-hmm. and so forth. At that meeting when the GBC came to ask him about initiating gurus and... With Pradumna. Huh? With Pradumna also. Yeah, with Pradumna we have those early transcribes. So they'll be in an article and you can read them. And this is part of the evidence or the, or the quintessence of the evidence that we presented to the GBC back in 2002 to remind them. And in that meeting with Sridhar Maharaj, he did not... He did not. Let me just read this one thing. Mm. He said, quote, it is, he's talking about initiating gurus. He says, it is not geographical. That's the first thing he says. It is not geographical. What does geographical mean? That's a synonym for zonal. Mm. It is not zonal. If, it, if it's any more clear to you, let's just use that word. Okay. It is not geographical. It is not zonal. There must be a little bit of shraddha, faith. Otherwise, a man of this place, he likes the acharya from another zone. Then you would compel, compel his faith. It is very difficult to arouse faith, but to destroy it is very easy. Mm. So, what happened in the Zola Acharya system, it was if you join a temple, if you were a new devotee in 1978, 79, and whatnot, and you joined a temple, say, in San Diego, or whoever the GBC guru was in San Diego, that was your eternal spiritual master by design, because Krishna arranged, that's where you join. Mm. But what devotees found out on their own was, yeah, I might have joined in New York, but, uh, you know, I have more faith in the guru from Bombay or, or, or Singapore or it's from another zone. And the, and the devotees would say, no, you're not understanding yourself. Krishna's arrangement is you joined here. That means such and such is your guru because he's his own acharya here. Yeah. And this was interfering with, with devotees' faith. And this created a lot of problems. But there you have it. It is not zonal. It is not geographical. You see? That last quote of Srila Sridhar Maharaj is very, very clear. Which one is that? You read that. It's to, it's to Bhakti Charu Swami. There's a meeting with Bhakti Charu Swami. And Srila Sridhar Maharaj says, My suggestions to keep the unity are that a person of one zone may accept a guru of another zone. Free choice by Shraddha. He who has preference for one Acharya 
but is compelled to accept one whom he considers to be lower, that is an anomaly. That zonal arrangement is against free choice. Yeah, so the GBC revealed all, reviewed all these things back in 2002. Mm. But again, I tell you, the problem is just like with the fake news media. The, the wrong propaganda is made for whatever its reason, and when the truth is revealed, they don't say anything about it. And the false propaganda keeps going on and on and on. And then people pick it up again because, you see, the GBC did one thing back here, back in 2002. They clearly mm. stated Sridhar Maharaj is not the blame. The GBC body in the, in the whole kind of takes the blame. And then they just closed the book and went and ran away from it. Well, there's, there's implications in what they concluded themselves as the blame because in those years and possibly even today, the motto of the GBC is that when the governing body commission meets, we represent the will of Srila Prabhupada. Now, this is a direct thing from the Vatican, that when the <laughs> cardinals meet, the combined body of the cardinals is the will of God, and they choose the next pope. So uh, that's another thing. Who invented that philosophy? The GBC body represents the will of Srila Prabhupada. So there's problems there. And, and in order to get down to the root of the problem and finally lay the blame, if you're looking for the blame, who does it belong to? I know who it belongs to. I know the, who the history is. I, knew who, I know who stood up and actually said those words well, when the GBC body meets, it represents the will of Prabhupada. But I'm not going to say that here. But I know who that person is, and many other, many others of us know, you see. But because it's like cold case murder, you see, mm. they decided who didn't do it, but they haven't announced who did do it. And maybe that person should have stepped down in 2002. Well, they just left it kind of like that. And it still comes up, you know, and they look for a blame. And then they go back to the old, the old accusations and blame Sridhar Maharaj. This is totally erroneous. This is hypocritical, you see. We have heard that when they did make this resolution, that same person who was responsible for that was the only person on the GBC body that vetoed it, tried to veto it. Yeah, yeah. Politics. Yeah. Politics trying to s stay the course of truth, you see. Exactly. There's a saying in India, I think it's the India motto, Satyam Eva Jayate. Yeah. Truth will prevail. The truth prevails. And, and when you don't let it prevail, it raises its head again. You see, it keeps the, the, the truth wants to be heard. The truth wants mm. to be found. And sometimes devotees want to, oh, well, controversy, I don't want to get into it. Controversy, Bhagavad Gita was, 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 was spoken on a battlefield. Not that it was just spoken on a battlefield. It's what brought about the battle. Mm -hmm. Arjuna was ready to lay down his bow. He did lay down his bow. And Krishna is saying, what is this nonsense? Pick up your bow. Fight. He didn't say, you yeah, Arjun, be <laughs> humble. Take your bow. Put your tail between your legs and just scurry on home and sit around with your wives. You know? In fact, the Bhagavad Gita, the battlefield was only, the battle only happened only so the Bhagavad Gita could be spoken. Yeah, both things are like intertwined, you know. Yeah. The battle is brought about so Krishna will speak the Gita, you know. The Gita is telling Arjuna to fight. Mm -hmm. Fight for what? For truth. For that's righteousness. Fight for truth, you see. So because they never did come to the final grips of the truth, they kind of did in a general way. It's like a cold case. It keeps raising its head. Who yeah. is the blame? Yeah. Well, if I name the individuals here, and a couple of them are no, at least one of them is no longer living, it will disturb too many people. Mm -hmm. So it suffices to say that Srila Sridhar Maharaj is not the blame for the zonal charya system. And anyone who is continuing this rather offensive conclusion is indeed making an aparad. And what type of aparad? A Vaishnava aparad. And, and one of the most sickening things about Vaishnava aparad is that when one commits a Vaishnava aparad, if one doesn't realize it, um, 
soon thereafter, one becomes a perpetual offender, like Ramachandra Puri. He mm. was a perpetual operati. So it's like a disease. And then it spreads to someone else and they start saying it and they become a perpetual operati. So we call it the operati sampradaya. Hmm. All right, so that's the purpose here. Uh, we are going to uh, present a short article. I think it'll go out on Krishna Talk. Uh, before we conclude this, I want to put a picture of a book up on the, on the screen here. This is a book entitled A Historical Perspective, Our Affectionate Guardians. And this is uh, a, a, a very nice presentation. I have the original book right here. You can see it. It's a, it's a thin book. It was compiled by uh, Swami, uh, Swami Vishnu, Vishnu Maharaj, many, 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 many years ago, maybe 25 years ago or more. This is available. We'll, we'll leave some links uh, here down below where you can order this book at David Vision Bookstore. And this is the whole history of what happened and who did what. And uh, you can read this, uh, this. It's available online as well on our website. I can put the URL. Yeah, as a download, a free download. Yeah. Or, yeah. So it's yeah, a, unabridged, bri abridged and unabridged versions. Yeah, the unabridged is amazing. You know, sit back, <laughs> get in your easy <laughs> chair and, and get 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 prepared for a dose of true history, you see. And when you have a perspective on true history, then you can understand why some of the things are the way they are today, you see. Yeah. But because the true history isn't presented, some people are still searching, like, what went wrong, why did it go wrong, and how to stop it from going wrong in the future, you see. But unless mm -hmm. you know the truth, you'll never come out with the, the, the proper solution. It's simply patchwork. Right patchwork solutions all right so i think that's all we have to say about this today and uh until next time yes giddy anything that's, more that's no i'm covered very clear okay very clear Hare krishna prabhus until next time <laughs>